Hey, I'm Seth Johnson with Land the House. You're watching the Micro Hydro Series. Now that we have the wire running from the turbine to the house, it's time to get the electronics mounted so I can actually use the power that's being created. We have a few really awesome electronics to work with. This is a grid tie limiter inverter. I'm using the Midnight Solar Classic charge controller. And then I'm also going to be installing a breaker box for the DC in. I have two breakers. One's going to be used for this project and one's going to be used for the solar panels that will come in at a later date. To get this thing mounted, I'm going to be under the house on a concrete wall. So I've got a 1x4 uh, treated piece of wood, and then I've also got this 2 foot by 2 foot regular uh, 3 quarter inch plywood. It's been painted white just from an, an old project. And just in case there is some excess heat for one of these electronics at some point, I'm also going to be covering that with a piece of sheet metal so that it will act as a heat sink if something gets hot. Now, Quick disclaimer, I am a homeowner installing a micro hydro turbine with a little bit of advice from Spencer Langston of Langston Alternative Power. He's kind of walking me through step by step of things that I need to be doing. Um, but I am no electrician, so you should definitely check out code in your area before you go hooking up stuff like this. My plywood is actually 25 inches, so it's slightly more than 24 on this way but it is 24 that way, which means I'm going to cut my sheet metal long to fit 25 inches. I also want to cut my treated board at 25, so let's go ahead and do that now. The reason I'm using this treated board is so that if the concrete block were to get uh, wet from outside, it's not going to be damaging anything on my electronic system. It'll just be touching this treated board. So. I think what I'm going to do is cut the full length board up top here and then come down on the bottom and uh, make one that's not quite as long. So let's cut one that is about 8 inches here and that should do it. With my 25 inch piece of treated board here, I'm going to flip this over, stick it to the back and then I can hold this in place with a couple of clamps. Better go this way. Now I can flip this over and I'm going to put a couple of screws in there from the top so I hold this in place because later I'm going to be using these anchors here that are prepared for concrete. They are uh, a coated screw and that will go through both the plywood, that 1x4, and into the concrete wall. I went ahead and got that small piece on the bottom of this plywood. Let's go ahead and flip up our metal piece. Now, this is about 22 inches in one direction. Yes, 22 and a quarter. And so I want to be able to hit the 25 foot piece in this direction here. So let's just see what we're gonna do there. As you can tell, there'll be a little space there on the sides, but it's gonna be no problem. I'll go ahead and take a sharpie and mark these spots here so that I can go ahead and cut this with the angle grinder. I'm going to use the angle grinder to cut this metal. I'm using some glasses, a mask, and also earplugs just to make sure I'm not going to get any metal in my face. At some point, somebody's going to brush up against this metal and get cut, so. I'm gonna go ahead and sand it down a little bit because I know it will probably be me. Uh, but yeah, there's just some burrs here on the edge. I'm just gonna use this paper to knock down real quick. Now that I have this cut and the edges sanded down, I'm gonna put a couple little holes in the corners to mount this. Just using more of these one and a quarter inch screws to keep this down. I've got a drill bit big enough for my concrete anchor, and I've also got a nice big washer that can be used. 
So I'm just gonna come up here, right in the middle. And that will be for that. Now I'm gonna come back with another uh, masonry bit and put a smaller hole in here so that this will go into the concrete. Uh, but for now, we'll just keep that as is. That'll be one on the other top corner and then just one down here in the bottom. I'm up under the house now where I have my piece to attach to the wall. And I'm just gonna put it right there. I've actually already got the first hole marked where I want it so that I can put this up without having to hit a seam or a center of a block. So let me get this drilled in here. Now I should be able to use my concrete anchors with washers to get this piece connected to the wall here. Washer first, concrete anchor, get that pressed in. Okay, get this up into place. Too tight. <laughs> Got my fingers a little bit there. Okay, now I'm gonna toss a level up here on the top. Looks like right there I ought to do it. And then I'll drill the next hole in here. Sure is nice to have a, a fresh masonry bit. Have the three attachment points to the concrete. Seems like it is nice and strong also is level, and that should provide a good heat sink if there were to be any heat dissipated onto that surface. Now it's time to open up our electronics, which should be fun. This is the grid tie limiter inverter. So one of the things that's most important about this is that it has this clamp. So this will actually go over the main of my power coming in from the grid. It will clamp over that and then it will read the amperage at the uh, inverter. So that way it will know whether it should put power into the house or not. Regular power cord, have to deal with that here as well. Oh, let's get this out of the box. Now I'll be going over some of this stuff in more detail once we actually get it installed but for now we're just going to take a look at it and then get it put onto that plywood. Spencer has already used this one to kind of get some settings programmed in uh, so let's just look at it real quick. A nice heat sink here on the back which will be nice since we've got that piece of metal to uh, help dissipate any heat that's generated. It's got the dual fans up there and then looks like it's got a spec sheet over here there's where your uh, AC out is and the DC input there and we'll be using the I think it's the internal uh, let's see port here for this to be read from and let's see there's a remote here I don't have one of those so we'll just have to come under the house and look at the display right here anyway we'll get that installed looks like we can use three uh, no sorry four screws to get that put onto that wall. Now, let's move on to the charge controller. I'm gonna be using the Midnight Solar Classic 200 charge controller. So it has a 200 volt input, which is what we're running at the turbine. So we will be going through these features in a separate video as well. Let's go ahead and get this out. This was a, uh, a pricey little piece here but hopefully it will work quite nicely for what we're doing here. Uh, to mount this thing I'm seeing one spot up top here. Uh, I guess we have to open up the case to access the other mounting port. Because the amp reading cord is only 10 foot long the inverter is going to go on this side because that will go over there to my main breaker. So the charge controller will go on this side over here. I'm gonna go ahead and hold this up and kind of mark where I want it to be positioned. Now, in order to get to the mounting screws, there are screws here on the side that have to be taken out. I know you can't see it with this 
poor lighting, but I uh, just believe me that they're there. So I'm gonna take these off real quick. There's four of them, and then we will get this mounted up onto our mounting hardware. I have the cover off of the Midnight Classic charge controller, and I'm just going to be mounting this right here on this side. So I'm using a drill bit to get through that metal. Easy enough. And then I'm gonna use one of these Torx screws to get this mounted up here. May have to get an extension to fit through here. So this unit does have this plastic piece that I think will hold it long enough to get it mounted. So I'm gonna go ahead and use that here instead. Yeah. Okay, nice. Yeah, we can use that just to get it up here while I get some more screws to hold it in place. This inverter is gonna be the same way. I'm just going to mark the place that I want it up here and get that uh, installed by just putting a screw in to hold it in place. And then we can come back and put the other three in once I get that done. So I'm thinking about right here. So now that should be enough up here to just hold this in place like that. And I can use my drill again to the other screw. It's a lot of back and forth, but we're almost done. Okay, nice. Let me get the bottom two and we'll be done with that. Now, last thing for this part is to get this little breaker box installed. I'm just gonna come up here right here in the middle and uh, just drill a hole. It's just a little plastic box so it doesn't need a whole lot. Just gonna put the cover back on the midnight solar here so I don't lose any screws. Now I need to get the wire from the rectifier over to the breaker box. I was given some of this 10-3 that's not ground contact. It's gonna be perfect for under the house here. So I'm gonna go ahead and use my wire strippers to strip this outer sheathing off uh, a little bit, and then we will get it connected to the rectifier. I've got the wire from the rectifier, a couple of staples, comes up along the side of the house here, around here, and then now we're gonna drop into the box. I also need to remember that the uh, ground, or neutral, will need to come down and loop up into the charge controller. So let's go ahead and cut this wire somewhere down in here, and then we can reduce the length of the other wire some up here in the box. <laughs> I keep forgetting to uh, hit record. So uh, I've just got the wire coming down through the box up here, and I cut enough down here that the neutral wire can curve up in there quite nicely. So now we get the uh, fun task of stripping back this outer sheath all the way along here. I went ahead and got the wire run into the box here. The negative just goes down here through the box while the positive here is going to be connected to the line of my circuit. So let me get the screwdriver and I will just slide that wire in there and then cinch it down by screwing it tight. Okay, and that will just have another wire coming out from the bottom down here, like this one right here, and it will just go up into the other side of the charge controller. Should just be able to clip this breaker onto the box now. There we go. It's kind of stubborn in there, but I think we got it. Okay, wire comes down into the breaker box here, which uh, this side right here is the only one that's being used for now. Solar should come into that later. But uh, so the red wire comes out of that and will come around here and attach to the Midnight Classic. And then the white wire just came straight through the box and wraps around here. 
just like that. We're gonna come back to more mounting of electronics, but it's time to get the batteries installed. So using that same piece of desk that I'm recycling, I need to get a 40 by 20 sheet out of here. So I'm gonna come up from the corners and just make a line here. And then come up over here and make the same line. Now I'm just gonna cut out this 40 by 20 rectangle and that will be the top of our battery storage. I've got the plywood down here under the house and this is not treated so it's not ground contact but I've got a couple of treated boards and a 4x4 that will be used on the bottom of this. Now it's sitting on top of the plastic under the house so it's still not going to be really getting wet but I just want to make sure it's not going to have any rot issues. So I'm going to go ahead and get the, uh, the board, I guess the 4x4 on the back because it's got a lower spot and then I put these little uh, two by four blocks up here towards the front just to get it off of the ground. There's our basic platform for the batteries to rest. So we'll go ahead and start moving the batteries over here. Yeah. They weigh about, I don't know, 70 pounds a piece. I now have all five of the batteries sitting here on my little support. It's time to get these connected. I'm gonna be using some connectors that look like this right here. Let's see if it'll focus. It is the, the AC175. And I probably should find one that does not have the coating on it, but that's what I've got. So I'm gonna be using this, and I'm gonna be cutting a little piece of this four gauge wire, and that will go between these two to go from battery to battery. Let's go ahead and do that now. I've gone ahead and made two of these connectors. We need four of them total. And one of the main things when making these is you need to make sure that they are all the same length, apparently. That will uh, make sure that the batteries aren't being charged uh, differently. So anyway, these will go from one terminal to the other and we'll get those installed after we make one. But let me go ahead and show you how I'm making this real quick. I'm using four gauge wire and I'm just holding it up to the end of the connector here and then placing a finger to mark it down here at the other side so that I can get the same length. And I'm just putting a score there on the sheathing so I can come back and cut it at that point. And now I need to remove the sheathing here on this side to go through the connector. And I'm just kind of doing the same deal where I place a thumb and then score that sheathing. And I'm just gonna go around here and make sure I get this sheathing uh, cut all the way around. Now there is a way, with these batteries at least, that you can get the uh, terminal connectors that don't have the paint on them. And you can connect terminal, or uh, you can connect the two pieces of the connector together and it will cause you to use less parts. For example, if these didn't have paint, you could put these two together with some longer screws and it would just be a direct connection without the cable in between. But because my batteries are separated a little bit and I've got this turn, I'm just gonna be putting that piece of wire in there to make that turn. Anyway, back to work. Just twisted that sheathing off of there and now, Let's go ahead and use some of our connectors here. I've just got a socket set that I'm using to tighten and loosen these as required. I can just stick that wire into there and then tighten that back down. Now the place where it was scored earlier, I can take my wire cutters here and just cut this in half because it's four gauge and i'm using some small tools i'm just kind of grabbing a little piece of it at a time and uh, cutting through this multi-strain wire okay there we go and the last thing i want to do on these connectors is use the other side to measure where i need to get the last bit of this sheathing off the other side.
basically you want all of these connectors to be the same length and you're just connecting one piece of four gauge wire between the two different connectors. Now it's time to use the connectors to put these batteries together. I'm gonna pop the positive cover off there. Doesn't matter which color it goes on which, I'm just gonna use the red on the positive here. Just seems to make the most sense. And then I'm going to just make sure that this sits on the terminals nicely. Okay, and now I'm gonna use a wrench here to just tighten these down to make sure they don't come off or have any kind of poor connection. And that's how I make one big 60 volt battery. I've got the positive to negative connected all the way around here until it gets back to this side. So between these two terminals is basically a 60 volt battery. Now, I ordered some DC switches that are made for marine use. Uh, sorry, the lighting down here doesn't want to focus very well. Um, but these switches will be mounted up here like this so that I'll have one here and one here. And it's basically going to allow, uh, this will be a main cutoff from the turbine, comes down, goes into the charge controller, and then the battery positive will come up, have a cutoff from the charge controller, and there'll be another one where the positive from the battery comes up and has a turn off for the inverter. That way I can isolate every portion of this build. And if for some reason I have to pull the plug for the uh, inverter to the house, I can just reach down here and go clunk and remove that from the wall. So that is the reason for the switches is to have a disconnect between each stage here. So this has four different screw holes and on the back it's got these, uh, man, I wish that would focus. Let's see if we can get it to do here. Yeah, on the back it's got these terminals and you can pull these side pieces out to access that. So let's go ahead and find where we want to mount these and use the drill to put them up here on the wall. All right, I believe I just want this mounted right here towards the bottom and the other one will be right over here. So I think I can just put a single hole here to, be, to get started with this. Before I get this mounted on the wall, I probably should put the cables in there. Definitely would make it a lot easier. I'm gonna go ahead and pull these out. And then I'm gonna use these two short cables here to attach this. I think I'll tighten that down with a socket to make sure it doesn't come back out. There is a back cover that goes on this, which I'm going to return. And then I can use some of my screws here to get this installed. Now to get the cables attached to the batteries, you can see I have the red wires together here. So this one here is attached to this bolt over here, and the other is pushed down over the terminal and tightened down. I'm gonna do the same thing on the negative side. So I've got my two wires here. I'm going to take the bolt, put it through there, and then I'll be able to put the nut back on there and tighten that down. So now, I'll make sure I don't touch anything else with these wires, with these cables. And now I can tighten that down to make sure it is nice and snug. I'm gonna take the negative here and put it on the post of my inverter and get that screwed down so that it's tight. And then I can take the red here. Now my switch is off down here so it is, does not have power to it. Before I wire anything else up I'm going to install this box so our receptacle can be down here. 
I'm just gonna place it right down here towards the bottom. I've actually purposefully omitted two steps here in this build. The first one is the wiring of this receptacle. If you want to learn how to do that, you'll have to find a different video somewhere else. I'm not an electrician, but basically it goes from this box up and to a breaker in my main panel. Um, it's just a regular 15 amp breaker. And uh, the other step that I have omitted is the amp reader that comes out of the inverter and goes up and clamps around one of those two uh, mains coming in from the power company. Um, it is directional, so you have to make sure it's pointing in the right direction. But here's a picture of how that is clamped around. Other than that, uh, let's get on with the rest of this wiring here. So all that is left is to get the charge controller wired up. So the red wire here is my hot coming in from the turbine, and the white is the uh, neutral there. And I've also got to get the batteries, so here and this other red one. And my uh, power is off here from the battery, so I can touch uh, the red wire here. Just got the four screws here that will take this panel off. We'll go ahead and get those off real quick. Uh, the turbine's not on, so there is no power going to that. And then the batteries, I've got this switch to make sure I don't uh, mess up touching anything here. All right, pull that down. Now, the back of the panel does have a connection for the front panel. We'll have to get that installed here in just a moment. Really poor lighting, I know, but this far side over here is battery positive, battery negative, your PV or input negative, and PV positive right here. So, I'm going to be putting the red wire on the PV positive, the white wire on the PV negative, and then the battery, which is the red one and the black one here, will go battery positive. And then lastly, uh, the black wire will go on this one. I'm gonna take the white and red wires here from the turbine, sneak them into the panel, and I'm gonna go to PV negative here, and then go to PV positive here. Need to unscrew that just a little bit more. There we go. Those are in there nice and tight. Now, I believe what I want to do is take my red wire over here to this side so that I have plenty of extra room to work with. And then I'm just going to turn it up like this. So I'm going to cut right around here to have plenty of room to work with. See if I can cut this wire with these small pliers here. May have to go get a better pair of cutters. Yeah. I got the red wire in from the battery, and now it's time for the last one, the black one here. I had to remove that uh, set screw in there just to get it to go in, but I think we've pretty well got it now. So I've got hot from the turbine, neutral from the turbine, battery negative, battery positive in that order. Now there is a little uh, blue case that will go on here. It just kind of helps to keep those wires from being exposed. So I'm just gonna place that up there and then push it into place like that. There are also some little uh, screen vent covers that I can put down here on the bottom to help maybe prevent any bugs from getting in there. Now for the front display panel of the Midnight Solar Classic, I'm gonna squeeze the sides and pull that cover off. I can then remove that piece of paper that says remove. I'm also going to pull the tab out of the battery here. Whoops, it's pulling the battery along with it. Get that stuck back in there. And then I should be able to just get this back on here. Like that. And now we'll go put it back on the unit itself. Now that everything is wired up correctly here on the charge controller, 
I'm gonna snap that cable back in there, make sure it is uh, tucked away nicely, and then I'm just gonna get the cover back on here. Just get these four screws back in. I just found a simple but important mistake that I made. The inverter is upside down. <laughs> so I'm gonna go ahead and take these screws out and uh, get this right side up again. May have to get that extension piece. Okay, there we have it. Luckily, I had purchased one more long red cable here. Otherwise, I would not have been able to make it. Uh, so I just had the inverter upside down and it is correctly installed now and had to move the uh, receptacle up there in order to uh, get this box down low enough to the batteries for that uh, black cable. All right, so the last thing for this video is to get the inverter cable connected here. And this is, uh, just looks like one of your typical, like a computer cable here. So I'm gonna reach under here and get that plugged up and then this is just going to be plugged into the receptacle up here. Some of this may be a little bit daunting. It was for me about a month ago before I got everything hooked up on the wall. So let's walk through step by step to show you what's going on here. First of all, we have the turbine power coming in from outside, hits that rectifier, and then I've got the uh, 10 three wire coming down across here which enters into this breaker box. It opens up there and you can access this breaker here. This one's gonna be for solar later, so we're just gonna use the one on the left there. The red wire comes down and goes to the charge controller. The white one passes through this box, doesn't connect to anything, and goes to the negative on the PV there. Then we've got the black and red battery cables here. So. The red one comes up here, goes through this switch, and into the Midnight Solar Classic 150. Then we've got the black one, which is coming up to the negative, indicated there on the battery uh, section. And then over to the uh, inverter, we've got the black or negative coming up, going to the black over there. And then the red goes, skirts around over there, comes up to this switch, and then over here. So. As you can see, everything is pretty straightforward. On the batteries, I've got negative, positive, negative, positive, all the way around to make one big 60 volt battery. And this concludes all of the wiring video for the Micro Hydro system. I hope you have enjoyed this so far. If you have, be sure to hit that thumbs up button. Remember to subscribe and ring the notification bell so you can be updated for the next parts in this series. Remember the turbine is a sponsored item from Langston's Alternative Power, link in the description down below. If you need a turbine for your micro hydro system, Spencer will wire it up based on your head pressure and gallons per minute so that you will get the best out of your system. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you in the next video where we power the turbine up and get some electricity to the house. All right, I'll see you next time.